Hey, what's going on everyone? So in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the Mandalorian, Glavis Ringworld from the Book of Boba Fett. I know a lot of people have had this figure for a while. I had this on order from Amazon, and I think they must have been one of the last retailers to get it in, but I'm glad they got them in and shipped them out. I have heard nothing but good things about this figure. Super happy to finally have this one. And of course, this comes in the Galaxy Packaging, Star Wars The Black Series up top. Through the window, you can see Din comes with his jetpack, his blaster pistol, that is the IB-94. He's got a knife that he really can't use. And the Darksaber, here we have Star Wars The Book of Boba Fett, and the Mandalorian Glavis Ringworld. On this side, the front window wraps around, and there's the side with artwork. Great picture of Din with the Darksaber. I absolutely love this. Got this green color for The Book of Boba Fett. There's a small window on the top, and on the bottom, barcode, small print, and some logos. And there's the back. You got the same picture that's on the side. You have a short bio in five different languages. This version of Mando is number eight in the Book of Boba Fett line. Then you have some more small print down there. And the bio just says, After entrusting Luke Skywalker with Grogu's care, the Mandalorian, known to few as Din Djarin, sets off to learn more about the origins of his people. All right, I'm going to get this brand new Mando out of the box, and let's take a look at him. Okay, so here is Glavis Ringworld Mando out of the box, and I have not been able to put this figure down. This, this figure's awesome. Sculpt-wise engineering wise from head to toe it is absolutely wonderful but let's get a close look we'll start up here with the helmet and i like this i think the lines in here are much more accurate to how we saw him in the show the visor looks great the fin up here is a little thinner you know than previous versions sides look good that's what the back looks like it's super glossy it has a wonderful sheen just like all of the armor it just looks fantastic. I am very happy with this new helmet. And from the neck down, we have his armor from, you know, like season two and three, and of course, Book of Boba Fett. And I think they did a wonderful job on this. But let's take a look at the cape first. So they gave him a cloth cape this time, and I absolutely love it. I love how it's tucked in there. It lays nice. Now, of course, right out of the box, it was a little, you know, wrinkled and bumpy in places. I'm hoping that'll smooth out over time. Yeah, but it's fine. I love how it's tattered on the bottom. That looks good. It's just a cool looking cape. I think they did well there. And that's what the back of him looks like. So you got some holes there for the jetpack. And they even left the hole there for the M and Phase pulse rifle. And there we are. And it works well. Now, of course, as far as timeline, he did not have this rifle at this point in time, but it does work. And it's kind of cool that they left that there. So if you did want to pose him with this rifle, you know, you certainly could. But I don't plan on doing that. I just thought I'd throw that out there. Um, yeah, but moving on. The chest looks good. The chest is an overlay, and the belt is another overlay. So you've got two overlays here. So the chest can move independently, and this belt and this part of the armor here, this like under armor uh, bit, can all move independently. I love that. But this new belt looks awesome. The shells look good there. All this paint in here is very clean. Pouch, some little grenades there, or thermal detonators. Got a hook there for the dark saber. Got this little armor bit back there that's kind of roughed up. The blue there looks very nice. Holster looks good, and I'm glad they ditched the loop. Totally unnecessary. I mean, the pistol sits in there nicely without it, so I'm glad they got rid of that little loop. Arms look great. I mean, the, yeah, the mudhorn signet's awesome. Of course, now the shoulder bells are on a ring. Okay, so those get out of the way. The undersuit looks nice. The embraces look good, some nice detail. You know, no paint, but they look nice. Armor plates on the back of each hand, gloves, legs, armor there, looks fantastic. Blue there, kind of a maroonish color there. Some more shells down here. This on the right shin, and you got this on the left side and the, the bottom of his boot there. It's a nice tread. I mean, from top to bottom, front, back, everything about this figure is just great. And real quick, let's compare. So this is the new one in the middle. This one here on the left is the original Beskar Mando. Now, I did give him a cloth cape. I just made one. Uh, and I also chromed the jetpack uh, to make it a little more screen accurate. But as you see, this armor is a little bit darker and not quite as glossy as this one. The helmet, you know, this one is just so much better. The fin, as you see, is a little more narrow. The visor's better. The lines in here are a little more screen accurate. The chest, of course, is part of the sculpt. It's not an overlay. The belt is all pretty much stationary where all of this will just move independently. So nice. This one over here on the right is the one that came in the three-pack with Ahsoka and Grogu. They did make the armor a lot shinier, more glossy. Same helmet as this one. 
Of course, it's the same base body. And the big thing on this one is the elbows only get to 90 and the shoulder bells are glued down on these two. So you have, you just have limited range in the arms, especially the, you know, the shoulders. Uh, but overall, I mean, yes, these do look good, but this one here, the new one, blows these out of the water. All right, so let's take a look at articulation. So he's got some excellent side to side at the head. He's got some very good down, some excellent up, and some wacky tilt. The tilt is insane. As far as arms, all right, now that the shoulder bells are on a ring, they're not attached to the arm anymore, so they get all the way up to there. So crane technique all day long. Love it. Love it, love it. Now, as far as arms around, okay, on mine, if I go to there, the shoulder bell just stops, and I don't know why. I, I feel like I'm going to break it, but of course, the arm can rotate around. You know, you can rotate it at the shoulder. Here, let's go this direction. It does rotate around, but for some reason, the shoulder bell seems to have limited range, but it does move. Okay. Again, I don't want to break that little tab that's holding that on, but the butterfly joints that he has now, outstanding. That's hard to beat right there. Now, the elbows are much better on this one. Okay, They both get past 90. Love that. He's got a swivel at the elbow. He does have gauntlet swivel. That's always a plus as far as right hand. Okay, swivel and a very nice up and down hinge on the right. And for left hand, he has a side to side hinge. Oh, and of course, gauntlet swivel on the left side. As far as midsection, you've got a little bit of crunch, some very good back and some very good side to side tilt. And for legs, they get up that far, they go way out. And again, the belt will just flex right out of the way, you know, being a separate piece. That's awesome. And you can just slide that back down. Now they don't go back at all. As far as thigh swivel, yes, there is a thigh cut that is hidden by this armor, but you also have a little bit of pivot at the hip joint. So that's nice. And for knees, okay, single knees this time, swivel at the knee. And for feet, this one goes that far. The right one only goes to there because it runs into this, but they both go up a decent amount and you do have some swivel at the ankle. So in the articulation department, this is a massive upgrade. And as far as accessories, let's start with this little, little knife. Okay, his little vibro knife. It's nicely detailed, right? The handle looks good, the blade looks pretty good, but the handle is so small, he cannot hold this thing. And I'm not gonna spend any time on this. I'll just show you how loose it is. I mean, he, no. He can't hold it. It's so loose. That's in the right. And of course, in the left hand, it's, it, it's even worse in the left. So I'm going to utilize this cute little slit in the boot. I'm going to put it right in there. And that's where that sucker is going to stay. And next, let's take a look at the jetpack. So this is a new sculpt. This is actually smaller than the previous versions of the jetpack. And I like it. It's very glossy. Okay. There's no paint anywhere, uh, but that's fine. I mean, his was pretty much all just Beskar silver color. Uh, but it's a great sculpt, got some excellent detail throughout, got some little tabs down there at the bottom, that's kind of cool, and it's on a three peg design, so it cannot rotate, that is nice, and overall, I love this thing. And that's what it looks like on him, and once this thing is on, it's on. The, it is such a tight fit, it's actually hard to get in, I mean, there is no way that's coming out, but it is so nice to have his jetpack on, and the cape on, at the same time. Right, something that you could not do with previous versions of of uh, Den. Now, unless you made your own cloth cape like I did, or you know, get a custom cape. But this looks good. I like how it drapes over the left shoulder, how it's tucked in there. Jetpack looks great. I mean, this is, yeah, I like it. And before I get too far, let's compare it to the original Beskar Mando jetpack. And yeah, you can see it is much smaller. Okay, it's a brand new sculpt. I love the sheen on the new one. It is so much better. I mean, not that this was bad, but I really like this one. And here's a look at the IB-94 blaster pistol that he comes with, and this is a new sculpt. All right, this one's a little bit bigger. You have some great texture there on the grip. It's kind of a kind of a gunmetal gray color. I do like it. That is what the flip side looks like. Okay, a little bit less detail on that side, but yeah, great looking pistol. And here it is next to the original IB-94, and yes, you can see that it is different. I am loving the detail on the grip, and if I line up the grips, yeah, you can see this one's much bigger. And just like the other one, it goes in the hand beautifully. The trigger finger's right through the trigger guard, and uh, that looks really good in his hand. And here he is in a relatively basic action pose with the feet pretty far apart. This figure's very stable, and he looks good with this thing. 
And with the elbows being much better this time around, he can fire low from the hip like that. And again, highlighting these elbows. He's drawing. I don't think you could do that with the original Mando. All right, so next let's see how the holster works. And I'm so glad that loop is not there. That drops right in. It's very secure. It's not going to fall out. And that looks nice in the holster. And I think that pistol's just going to stay holstered because this is the accessory I'm going to pose this Mando with. And this is the Dark Saber. Okay, it's a new sculpt on the hilt. Okay, they added that little loop on the end to put it on his belt. I like it. The blade looks pretty good. Okay, I do wish they would put the little crackly effects in there. But it's okay. It's no huge deal. But, you know, you do have some nice detail on the hilt. It's all one color. But I do like it. And, of course, this blade can be removed. And let's see how the little... The little hook on the belt works. Okay, that'll sit, right? <laughs> Come on. There we go. It's kind of dark in there. Uh, that sits nicely. I like the look of that. And how stable is it? Yeah, that actually stays put. Okay. Yeah, that looks good. But I don't think I'll use the belt loop. This weapon's going in his hand. And I do love the look of that. It's pretty stable in his hand. Okay, it sits in there nicely. And um, yeah, I mean, just in one hand, that looks nice. And this wrist hinge is amazing. So you can point the saber straight out. And there he is with the dark saber in one hand in a very wide stance. This figure is so balanced. And you can definitely get two hands on this hilt. And you can get the hilt kind of in front of him. I mean, that looks good. The butterfly joints help. I kind of like the look of that. And there he is with the saber just a little bit higher with the head tilted down. I think that's a good look. Yeah, I kind of like the two-handed look. I mean, this saber was kind of heavy for him at times. So I think I might just leave him like this for now. So let's go put him on the shelf and let's see what he looks like there. And here we are. And wow. This figure looks so good on the shelf. And in this light, I think the armor actually shines pretty well. It has such a nice sheen to it, the gloss. I just love that. I mean, not that the others are bad. I mean, there's the original Beskar, and then the one that came in the three-pack is right there. You know, they're all pretty good. But this one is just miles ahead. They did such a good job on this figure. I am so glad to finally have him in the display. So bottom line. This, this could be figure of the year already. I mean, it's practically perfect. Everything about it, sculpt, engineering, it is so well done. And I think I forgot to mention there are some holes in the bottom of the jets if you want to plug some flame effects into. That's nice. But yeah, now the knife is a little bit of a gripe. You know, that's more or less a decoration now. That's unfortunate, but it's no big deal. I mean, I think the dark saber is just going to stay in this one's hand. I love the updated pistol, you know, bigger with a nicer grip, um, but the armor. I love the sheen, the helmet, everything about this figure is so good. The cloth cape. This is what this character needed all along. I don't know why they went with plastic and continued to do plastic, you know, but I'm glad they finally gave this one a cloth cape. I mean, this is definitely the definitive Mando figure. It's just great. I am so happy to have it, but just like always, I want to hear from you guys, so comment below and let me know what you think of the Mandalorian Glavis Ring World from the Book of Boba Fett. And if you enjoy videos on Star Wars The Black Series, smack like and subscribe if you're new. I would certainly appreciate it and something else I urge you to consider, and that is joining the channel. It's only 99 cents a month. You can become a member of the 112th Battalion. I would certainly appreciate that. But just like always, I just thank you guys so much for watching. See you all next time.